past and for a while he was somewhat of a celebrity but then he went silent 10 years have gone by and nobody has heard from him since do you know him oh no no, no. you don't know him right now i'm on a mission to track him down and see if it's actually true that he doesn't sleep Just arrived in Da Nang Airport. I am so excited to go meet the no sleep guide. Hui, 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 where's hui? Oh, he's right there. How you doing? Dude, good to meet you. This is Hui. He's a friend of a friend who lives in nearby Hoi An, Vietnam's ancient port town. He is kind enough to join me for the adventure to find Mr. Nop. However, there is a little problem. Whoa. The city, this morning. What about on the road to the village? I think it's just a little bit like this. <laughs> the four hour journey to get there was as epic as any can be. And we had some pretty cool stops along the way. Couldn't pass up the chance to see the Golden Hand Bridge on the way to the No Sleep Guy. It's right on the way. I've seen pictures of it on Google for years and uh, it's pretty cool to be up here. Just a few hours away from the epic Hands Bridge was another really special place with a bunch of ancient temples that date back 1800 years. We're here in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around. We just came across this incredible 4th century Hindu temple complex called My Son, somewhere in central Vietnam. You know, I came here to go find the sleepless man, but this is absolutely outstanding. The greatest challenge is that I am alone besides my guide, and we don't know where to locate Mr. Nop. But after translating some old newspaper articles, we narrowed it down to one village and started asking the local people there if they recognized him. Printed out this flyer with his name, Tai Nop, if I said it right. And on the bottom it says, the man who doesn't sleep. I'm getting a lot of funny stares in the street, but it's all, it's all friendly. Everybody's smiling. Fong Kovit need not come. She knows him. I see now him, but she actually don't know him where is the him house. <laughs> they kind of know. They're like, yeah. So what what she say? Just go straight and up. I think we should buy some gift for him. Get some oranges. Yeah, dragon fruit. Yeah. Look at all the fruit we got. Yes. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. <laughs> the watermelon and oranges and dragon fruit and lychee. Super cheap, huh? And with that, we have some idea as to where he might be. I spoke to another local person and he told me that he lives in a blue house just outside of town. So I hopped in a motorbike and headed through the field to find him. We made it. We found, we found the house. The picture, the picture. Xinxiao. That's him. Is that him? Yeah. Yeah, we made it. Yeah. <laughs> Xinxiao. <laughs> How are you? Okay. I know we kind of showed up unexpectedly, but I hope is is okay that we spend some time with him. Yeah. 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 He said that uh, at the moment he uh, 80 years old. 80. Yeah. But he wants to sleep. He wants to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> what? When is the last time that you slept? Yeah, in a plane Yeah, he said uh, it's a long time. Uh, you don't remember. It's pretty wild that I found him. Yeah, Mr. Nope. Nope. Hi, Nope. Here we are. Just a smiling man. <laughs> the big search for Mr. Nop is finally over. Can you believe that it took me three total days of travel time from Arizona to Vietnam to find him? Now I am on a mission to learn all about his life and see if it's actually true that he hasn't slept in over 60 years. You know, the fact that he hasn't slept means he's almost twice his age because he's spent more time awake than anyone else's age. So he might as well be 130. His wife was super friendly and started cutting up the fruit that we brought over. And then I learned that they are very spiritual people. Buddhism is the main religion of Vietnam. The Buddhists believe that the human life is one of suffering and that meditation, spiritual and physical labor, and good behavior are the ways to achieve enlightenment or nirvana. Many Buddhist people have these shrines in their house and pray to them several times a day. It's a beautiful sight to witness. In the evening, like what do you do? Like most most people, they, you know, 10 o'clock, they, uh -huh. they sleep. Yeah. What are you doing between 10, 11, 12, 1? He also working in the night time, making rice wine. Rice wine. Oh, <laughs> so he likes to drink. <laughs> Before the war, you slept. At what point did you stop sleeping? He slept oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. during the war. During the war. Yeah. 
and then one day he just stopped sleeping. Yeah. Do you know why you can't sleep? Ah, cái nó chịu á. No. Oh, chịu. I don't know. Tự nhiên rồi đó. Yeah. After that he don't know yet. He went before. Yeah. And what did they say at the hospital? <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> Mr. Nop's wife is preparing lunch for us. It's only like 10 o'clock right now, so she's been cooking, and it smells amazing. This is the son. Yes. Nice to meet you. What do you think about him not sleeping? He feels kind of normal now. <laughs> so you, you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast slash lunch was served, and I gotta say that Vietnamese food is one of the world's best. It's healthy, it's clean, and it's plentiful. Nothing like a little shot before lunch. <laughs> she make everything this, this morning. Thank you, come on. <laughs> it, it, tell her that it looks amazing. So what is this? What, this is chicken? Yeah, chicken. This is a soup? Soup. Pork soup. This is a plate of congealed cow blood and you just put it in the soup or eat it as is. More chicken, rice, and this is always got to have some kind of dipping sauce here. <laughs> wow, this is, this is a, this is a feast. Mm. You're a lucky man because she's a very good cook. <laughs> He's like, I know. All right, gonna try the chunk of blood. You dip it in the salt and pepper. Okay. A little salt and pepper. The texture is kind of like rubber. It tastes kind of like blood if you have a cut and you do this. But it's um, not as strong. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Good for us as well. You want it? Yep. <laughs> He's gonna finish my blood. What do you think about him not sleeping? Is it true? The first time is feel long, but at the moment it's a long time. So it's, it's true. It's true. Yes. He doesn't sleep. When is the last time you saw him in a, in a deep sleep? Never? Really? Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> Do you sleep? I'm having a shot of, wine, of rice wine every 30 minutes. Every 20 minutes. Here, here comes another one. Yo! Yo! <laughs> it's strong. Apparently it's 40%? Yep. That's the same strength as vodka. It's strong. More than an hour went by and I was starting to get comfortable with Mr. Nop and his wife. I will say though, it was a bit strange that he only took three bites of food. The drinking, however, never stopped. I think Andre has to take it. I don't think you have a choice. All right, here's where things start to get interesting. Mr. Nop keeps inviting me to visit his house, which I realize he's talking about another house, the one that he lived in during the war in the 1960s when his sleepless nights began. Okay, so that's his home? Yeah. Really? And he's still working in the, the, the rice over there. That's yeah. where he works. He and him son working over there. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful here. It's like a little pocket of green mountains, rice fields, terraces, and a house. And that's where he lives. We're going to go there right now. This is so surreal. Just walking through this swamp. It's all wet because of the, the, the storm. Exactly. So you have many jobs. You're you're rice wine and you're a farmer. Like you're working 24/7. Yeah. He's a superhuman. <laughs> yes. He's is. like, yeah, I know. Yeah. So I have a question about your sleep. When yeah. you're working, do you feel tired? Not not too much like a uh, normal people. Longer, <laughs> longer. What's your secret? Like, is it the tea that you drink, or what's there's some secret that you have? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They he normally drink the tea, green tea and. Rice wine. <laughs> how much how much wine do you drink in one day? Yeah. He's like, yes. <laughs> it's one bottle. Yeah, one bottle. If if you could sleep, do you want to sleep or you, you prefer to stay up all night? Yeah. He wish can sleep. <laughs> can I ask him about his hand? Uh what happened here? Yeah. Yeah. American oh, war. Yeah. American oh, war. Yeah. He's like this guy. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a long time ago, yeah. Is he it's okay? I mean the... Yeah, I think okay. Just walking in the... Yeah, with the left hand. Yeah, left hand. 
Even though Mr. Nob dismissed my concern about his hand, I still have a feeling that there's a reason he won't open up about the Vietnam War, or as I call it out here, the American War. To summarize, this era of heartbreak is near impossible, but what you should know is that the war was fought between the communist government of North Vietnam and the anti-communist South. The allies of the North were primarily the Soviet Union and China, whereas South Vietnam was supported by the United States. I'm sure that you've seen the footage and listened to the music from the 1960s. A large portion of Americans took to the streets in protest against the U.S. involvement in the war. In the end, around 4 million Vietnamese civilians were killed in this bloody conflict. I can't even begin to imagine what life was like for Mr. Nop not just to live through the war in his adulthood, but also to fight in it. It really makes me wonder, could PTSD have something to do with his condition? If I was awake 24-7, I would need a place to hide out like this. It's just absolutely surreal to be here. And this is the house, right here. During the war, he kind of hid out in this place, and he's basically been awake since he moved into this house. And look how old it is. So, I don't have a place to sleep tonight. I haven't booked any places, and I assume that there were hotels around here or something. He offered that we could crash here, like in this house. So, I'm gonna take him up on it. It's gonna be pretty interesting. <laughs> Tell me about this house. Like, when did you, did, did you build this house with your hands, or when did you move here? The first time he came here around, yeah, 1945. 45? You have two houses, so why do you come to this one? At the moment, he saw that the himson still live here mm. with no wife. Himson with no wife. <laughs> no wife. Yeah, yeah. And he and himson come here and stay a little bit and work in here. Night time he work in house, just met some wine. I want to stay awake with you in the night and just talk and eat and I don't know watch TV like whatever you do at night. I wanna I wanna be there with you. Yeah. Do you want to make the uh, rice wine tonight? <laughs> Yeah. The Vietnamese wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to. Right. If you could say any message to people in the world, what would you what would you tell them? If the government or the some friend have uh, some money for him to, to make him better and he can sleep, because at the moment he wants to sleep. So he wants help. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can I can send him to the hospital. If he wants to go, I, I'll, I'll pay for his hospital. Mm -hmm. So he has, he has another house. This is just one of his houses where he works and he sometimes stays, but he has another house that he stays at. He actually has another house. He has three houses. I'm confused. He keeps telling me about houses, houses. This is his working house. Then he has a new house where I met him, built three months ago. And then he has another house that he stays at. I really want to know what he does in the nighttime. Like daytime, he seems normal. He's hanging out. But like when everybody's sleeping, what has he been doing for the last 60 years? What's your favorite restaurant here? I will take you tonight, my treat. Does he drink coffee? Only rice wine. Never coffee? Yeah, never coffee. Maybe if he drinks a lot of rice wine, he will sleep. A lot of wine. Yeah, yeah, right. When he win a lot, like a one liter or something, he sleep, sleep a little bit, one hour or two hours. Okay, so I just uncovered one clue. He does sleep if he drinks a lot of wine, yeah, like one liter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but it kind of stop thinking into the head and he sleep one hour or two hours then back at the normal. Does he know if there's any more people in the world that don't sleep? Yeah, I'm gone. He don't know actually, but he did not on no one. Mr. Nop and I motorbiked back into town to his favorite restaurant. Have I mentioned that the countryside here is absolutely epic? We arrived at dinner and immediately entered into a wild scene. My name? What's your name? Yeah. yeah. Ask, ask them if it's, if it's true that he doesn't sleep, if they know about it. Yeah. yeah. It's true? No sleep? Yeah. Sleeping? No sleep. Yeah. My name is Ngoc. Ngoc. You? You don't like beer? No beer? Only he wants uh, rice wine. Rice wine. The word of the day is yo, which means cheers. Yo. Hey. Yo. 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 I hope I'm doing that at 80 years old, just downing beers. Hey, tell me about him. What do you know about him? The, the guy, the man, have a the house over there and just five or six, around five, six years ago, working in the rice field at the midnight. Yeah. 
We're sitting here eating a communal food, and he's only had like one bite, so I'm starting to get worried that he also doesn't eat. We have arrived to house number three. It's quite different than the other two. A little more open, blue, very blue. And this is where he makes and drinks his rice wine. Oh. <laughs> Tastes like a really bad version of soju. It's so natural, the smell is so so strong. Huh? As the night progressed, so did the making of rice wine. Oh, we found the, look at this concoction over here. This is where he cooks it. Every night. Every night. <laughs> wow. Inside is rice. Mm -hmm. The fire in here. Mm -hmm. The water inside enough. The rice inside enough. Some frozen rice. Oh, he puts the bottle there. Yeah. Take it. The bottle in here. And then the rice wine come out. Is he going to be here tonight making the rice wine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Around 2 a.m. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would love to come. Yeah, I just need some to drink, you know? Okay, of course. You could drink with me. I want to see you in the nighttime. Yeah. I make sure that it is. <laughs> that happened, huh? yeah. Smells like pigs. Whoa, there's pigs, bro. This is wild. Yo, there's pigs just out of nowhere. So, he has pigs here for, for food? To eat? Yeah, to sell in the market. Uh -huh. I'm back at house number one. It's 8.57 p.m. And I'm gonna attempt to stay awake all night. See if it's true if he actually doesn't sleep all night. I'm tired. This is gonna be a wild night. I may or may not have fell asleep a little bit in the house. Yeah. I'm just so tired, but I woke up and he was gone. So we think that he's at the his other house making rice wine. The motorbikes were locked up in the house. We couldn't find the key, so we have to walk. 30 minute walk in the rain. We found ponchos at someone's house. So we jacked them and we're gonna go bring them back. They were on the porch. As you can see, nobody is awake. Everybody's sleeping. We made it after a 30 minute walk in the rain. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he doesn't sleep. <laughs> Yo, we found him. He told us we are so good to find this house. Are you tired? My dog, my dog. No, no. No? No. <laughs> Everybody is sleeping. We just walked here. Nobody is awake, except for you. So his rice wine factory is pretty damn impressive, and he cares a lot about it. The entire thing is handmade and he's able to produce gallons and gallons of it every single night for both personal consumption and selling it in the market. Is this his secret sauce to being able to stay awake forever? <sighs> Copious amounts of rice wine and cigarettes? How much does he sell for one 10 liter? Let, let me have this. Một lít là 200 hay là carbon? Yeah, good 5 liter is 100,000 down and 10 is 200,000 down. How do you feel that everybody's sleeping but you're awake? I went home. Yeah. Kind of okay now because it's really long time, but it's kind of fun for me or for you or something like. I'm tired, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, right. Three thirty-two. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. Uh, he brought shots. <laughs> yes, sir. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> he changed his clothes. It looks like he's got pajamas on. <laughs> he ready for sleep. Ah, sleepy time. So sometimes he lays down, but he just doesn't sleep. He already tried, tried too much, but he, because he wants to sleep, like a normal people, yeah. try and close the eyes, but couldn't sleep. Still thinking in the head, in the brain. I'm tired. <laughs> You're tired? <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. Bro, I'm tired, man. <laughs> Maybe we can get some breakfast. What time do people eat breakfast here? Six. But depending on the weather, if weather is rainy, maybe seven or eight. He's giving me more wine. Really, really bad. For real. 
Hmm? Ayam fly. No, it's okay. <laughs> he keeps trying to get me to sleep, but I'm trying to stay awake with him. I just witnessed him lay down, and I thought he was going to close his eyes. They just remained open. And then after five minutes, he sat back up again. And then he's just sitting here on the side of the bed. Guy doesn't sleep. <laughs> Update, it is 4.41 now. My friend Hui has fallen asleep. And it's just me and Mr. Nop. I don't know what he's doing now. He's making a fire. It's still raining outside. This guy doesn't stop. Doing the Asian squat. We're just chilling. We can't talk to each other, but as I always say, everybody smiles in the same language. <laughs> Somehow we can just sit here and look at each other and uh, get along. It's pretty cool. Update. It is 5.39 in the morning. The sun is coming out. And uh, I made it. Clearly he made it. I actually barely made it. Uh, I, I'm so tired that I might have lost her words. <laughs> he came inside and I wondered what he was doing. <laughs> Sneakily taking more shots. You know, my life is always so go, go, go. And so it's really kind of nice to hit the brakes and just sit here and do nothing, literally. I keep thinking to myself in my head like, what are we gonna do next? The sunrise just came out, 6.15 in the morning. But the answer is <laughs> nothing. We're just gonna sit here and look around. Wait. What's up, bro? I think he's talking to me about getting coffee, but I don't understand. Ask him if he wants to go to breakfast with us. We, uh, we, we, uh, too, too early for him. <laughs> too early, he doesn't sleep. Early for breakfast for him. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. In the blink of an eye, he just left to go feed his chickens at one of his other houses. So I might go get some breakfast and uh, take a nap. I'm tired. Bye bye. And back into the rain we go. The poncho game is strong in Vietnam. It's always raining and they're always on motorbikes. It's amazing how early everybody wakes up and eats breakfast in Vietnam. It's like 6, 10 a.m. And there's a giant bowl of pho being prepared. Wow, look at this bowl, man. Oh, man. Oh, that is so tasty. It's not very often that I meet superhumans. One of them was Wim Hof for his ability to withstand sub-zero temperatures. Another was Dan Meyer, the guy who can swallow multiple swords at once. And then there's Sultan Kosan, the tallest man on earth. But something is extra unique about the sleepless man. I came here to investigate and see if it's actually true. Does he sleep or not? And my conclusion is both yes and no. He says he doesn't sleep, but I believe that he does lay down sometimes. But his body turns off, but his brain doesn't turn off. I think his brain is always going, and that is just absolutely surreal. It seems pretty clear to me that the war has had a major impact on Mr. Nop's sleepless condition, but I wonder if we will find out if this is the truth. I also think that he just doesn't need as much sleep as we do to function normally. He's out here living life, working two jobs, and he's super busy. It is obvious that two secret ingredients help keep him going, and that is rice wine and cigarettes. <laughs> and a lot of both. After spending two days with him, I'm going to assume that he smokes 70 cigarettes a day and drinks half a liter of rice wine per day. All in all, I am so happy I came out here to meet him and this is really a story about Vietnamese hospitality. I showed up at their doorstep unannounced with nothing planned and he and his wife welcomed me in with open arms, cooked me food, gave me a place to crash, and to show my appreciation, I gave Mr. Nolp 500 bucks that he can hopefully use to go to a hospital to get healthy.
In any regard, thank you for being here and watching this story. I think it's one of the most special ones I've ever told and my stories are just getting more and more epic. So subscribe if you want to join me on my adventures around every country and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> <laughs>